All right, what's going on y'all? So today I'm gonna to be talking about my favorite steroids for bodybuilding. So I've done videos in the past where I've talked about the individual compounds, the side effects you can expect from them, um, the results you can expect to get from them, um, and then even some of my favorite bulking and cutting cycles. But today I'm gonna to be talking about um, the best steroids for bodybuilding and specifically comparing DHT derivatives to nandrolones. Um, so if you don't know um, already, um, You've got three classes of steroids. You've got the testosterone derivatives, you've got DHT derivatives, and then you've got nandrolones. So today we're gonna to be specifically comparing DHTs to nandrolones, but I'm gonna be giving you more of a bro science perspective. I'm gonna be giving you more of my experience, my anecdotal experience using the two. Um, and then at the end of the video, I'll be kind of giving you my um, my recommendations for you know my favorite cycle um, with, you know, my favorite ones that I would use. And then also if I was to, you know, kind of to take it more of an advanced route, what I would do. Um, but first let's go ahead and get into the DHT. So on the DHT side, you've got, you've got orals like Anivar and Winstrol, um, and then you've got injectables like Mastron um, and Prima Bowl and Primo. I um, mean, by the way, guys, I'm not gonna be covering an extensive list here. These are gonna be um, what I have experience with. Um, so, you know, I've, not used everything under the sun. Um, so I'm gonna be keep keeping it to what um, I have experience with. So um, for DHTs, we've got those four. We've got Anivar, Winstrol, Mastron, and Primo. So with these, when it comes to um, building muscle, a milligram to milligram, um, these tend to be more mild. Um, this is something that's pretty popularly well known and something that I've also seen um, within myself. Um, Typically, you're just going to get more milligram to milligram out of nandrolones than you're going to get out of DHTs. Um, with that being said, um, DHTs typically are healthier on blood work. I'm not talking about the orals. The orals, um, as you guys know, um, orals have to pass through the liver. They're um, they're liver toxic, um, and those do you know typically have some negative uh, consequences on blood work. Um, but especially when it comes to Mastron and Primo they tend to be uh, a bit healthier on blood work, especially Primo. Primo is the, has the best safety profile um, out of any steroid um, that's been studied. Um, so in regards to health, um, DHT definitely wins. Because of that, um, even though it might be weaker mill milligram to milligram, um, you typically can run a little bit more of a DHT than an Angelone um, without it hurting your blood work as much um, because it has a, a better safety profile. Then um, besides that, um, you know, it might be weaker on the mass building side, but it does have, the DHTs typically have very great cosmetic effects. So this is why in a contest prep cycle, a lot of times you'll see um, at least two DHTs in there, usually an oral like Winstrol, um, and then you will typically have uh, Mastron, which, you know, both of those are known for um, the hardening effect, but these have great cosmetic um, abilities as well. Um, so that's kind of a, a brief overview of what you're going to get out of the DHTs. Now, when it comes to mood, this is one reason that I really, really, really love DHTs. Um, both Mastron and Primo, um, I have a marked difference in my mood um, and energy, but especially mood um, day to day when I'm on this. Um, there's actually something called the Primo Glow um, that is talking about this. Even in small amounts, um, a lot of people um, have just better moods throughout the entire uh, course of their day being on a DHT like Mastron or Primo, but especially Primo. Um, it just has a really, really good feel good effect. Um, and you just have, you know, a more sustained, great mood um, the entirety of the time that you're running. Um, so when it comes to DHTs, you know, the way I describe it is, you know, when I'm running a little bit of test with a DHT in place is a very, very clean, um, clean feeling, um, you know, I don't feel toxic at all. And I'm not talking about the worlds guys, I'm talking about Master on Primo. I don't feel um, toxic. Um, and then, you know, I might not be having huge, insane strength increases um, in mass gains, um, like I would with say an Angelone, um, but they're clean gains over time. And it has a really great cosmetic effect. So even if I'm bulking, um, because, oh, and this is the other thing I forgot to mention, DHTs, um, can help manage estrogen as well. So a lot of times you don't even need to run an aromatized inhibitor like Aromadex or Romacin um, because this is gonna manage estrogen and keep you from having estrogenic sides like I know or anything like that. Um, just running the DHT by itself. Um, you know, me personally in the off season, I'll run 
you know, low to moderate dose of test with um, a moderate to a little bit higher dose of Primo and that's all I need. I won't need an AI um, because of it. All right, so now let's get into Nangelones. So on Nangelones, we've got DECA, we've got MPP, and we've got Trimblone, Trim. Um, so MPP is just a short acting ester of DECA. Um, I used DECA once way back in the day, um, blew up like a water balloon, didn't really like it, so I'm not gonna really cover that here. So the two we're really gonna talk about is MPP, um, and trend. So when it comes to mass building, um, these are um, the most potent. Um, milligram to milligram, you're going to get a lot out of both MPP and trend. Um, I've talked in the past about bulking cycles, about how powerful MPP is at um, strength gains. And because of the strength gains, um, you know, what you get mass building wise out of it. And then, you know, trend, trend is known as the god steroid. Um, with that being said, even though these are very, very, very potent and powerful at building muscle, these typically are harsher on your blood work. So because of that, you typically can't run as much um, or shouldn't run as much um, as a DHT um, because of that. With that being said, you can still get a lot out of nandrolones at low doses. So MPP, you know, you really don't need more than 200, 300 milligrams a week. That's going to do a lot for you. And then trend guys, you know, people talking about running 700 milligrams, a gram of trend a week, that's absolutely ridiculous. And that will have negative health consequences. Um, you know, you can get a lot out of 140 up to 300 milligrams a week of trend. That'll really, really do the job. But with that being said, you know, if you guys have been following my videos, you know that I only recommend trend for pre-contest scenarios. So right here, you know, for mass building purposes, for bulking, um, you know, I would recommend MPP. Um, but even with that, you know, that typically does show a little bit on um, blood work. When it comes to mood, so this is this is something that, you know, now after having been in this game for a couple years now, and, and, you know, if you guys follow me, you know that I meditate and I'm really, really in tune with my mindset and all of that. I can tell a difference when I'm on Nandrolones, just like I can tell a, a positive difference when I'm on DHT. Nandrolones, um, you know, trend is uh, known for causing, um, you know, a lot of irritability and anger and aggression in people. Um, I personally don't get that, but with both MPP and trend, what I do find is just this, it's, it's like wrestling the dark side is, is, is the only way I can describe it, where you feel clean in a positive mood all day long on, on DHT. MPP a lot of times comes with a bit more anxiety and just um, a little bit more of you know you're 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 pushing something that you've got to can and keep under control. So um, with that, you know it's definitely not a positive mood booster like um, the DHT is. Um, but with that being said, you know some people you know have really really bad anxiety and. Um, irritability on nandrolones and then some people you know have very very little if none at all um, so that's really you know person dependent so when it comes down to the tube down to DHTs and nandrolones if I had to choose if I had to choose between I would absolutely choose DHTs over nandrolones with that being said nandrolones absolutely have their place so um, at the beginning of the video I said I would tell y'all kind of my favorite cycles what I would recommend so the first one I'm going to recommend is for most of you out there, and this is including myself, and this is um, what I would recommend if you A, want to get huge, you want to do it while looking really good, um, so you don't want to just blow up like a water balloon, um, and then C, you are you know, somewhat health conscious. Um, that's going to be a low to moderate dose of test, um, and if you guys have talked, you know that I've gone from being more of a moderate test guy to, to now low to moderate test uh, because of you know what you can get out of Primo. Um, so low to moderate dose of, of test with a moderate to, to, to moderately high dose of Primo. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention guys is Primo, um, even though it's it's my favorite steroid out there, um, it's, it's because it, it frankly, in my opinion, is the best, it also is the most expensive. Um, so if you wanna run it in high amounts, um, you're gonna need to, to be spending more money. Your, your cycle's just gonna cost more than if you were running you know, test with, with, you know, uh, an Angelone in there. You're going to, you're going to spend a lot less on that, but you're going to get uh, a lot better results when it comes to longevity and just look and all of that from the DHT. Um, so I would do a low to moderate dose of test with a moderate to moderately high dose of Primo. If you're advanced, this is where you can start now 
when you're building out your cycles and doing cycle design, you can kind of pick from each branch. So within the testosterone derivatives, you can go ahead and obviously have your test as a base. Then you can go ahead and pick out a DHT and then you can pick out an angelum based on um, your, your current size, um, your current ex experience, um, and then what your goals are. Um, so if you're more advanced, um, what I would do is do test as a base. I would do um, Primo and then um, you could have a little bit of MPP in place. That right there, guys, is my favorite cycle. That, in my opinion, is the most powerful bulking cycle. Um, you know, two, two summer guards. Obviously, you can jack up the doses of that. But, um, you know, with somewhat of health health and play here, um, this is my favorite cycle, guys. Um, so low to moderate dose of test, moderate to moderately high dose of Primo, and then a low dose of MPP. You guys should have insane gains from this. Strength gains, muscle gains. Um, and keep a, a fairly um, good look throughout the entire process. Um, but that's my video comparing DHTs to nandrolones. Like I said, you know, I definitely prefer DHTs over nandrolones. I feel much better on them. Um, and then moving forward, guys, you know, this next off season, I haven't planned it out yet. Um, but yeah, at least right now, I don't plan on running an nandrolone. It'll most likely be low to moderate dose of test with moderate to moderately high. Um, uh, dose of Primo. And I'm still making incredible gains off that, guys. And I know some big boy bodybuilders that have been in the game for decades, and they still are making improvements on that exact cycle. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please go ahead and smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Leave any comments or questions down below. Be happy, be positive, be powerful. Have a great rest of your day.